This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It's unfortunate, really, that we have to have a training for places of worship, a place that uh, many of us look at as sacred and as safe. And now at six, getting ready to survive a possible active shooter incident in a place where you're not supposed to be afraid. Making music for the ear could help to make some money for your wallet. Today in Hiring Hoosiers, building the foundation for a career in the music industry. Oh yeah, and we're live for the return of a Hoosier tradition. Can you hear them? Come on, <laughs> Indiana, can you hear them? It's high school football time is here. That means Friday football frenzy. We are live at Bishop Chattard High School this morning. Coming up, our little Donovan is somewhere in that crowd. <laughs> she doesn't have to get them fired up. They are fired up for week one on the gridiron. They are awake. <laughs> oh, it is TGIF. Goodness. It is Friday, August the 23rd. This is Good Morning Indiana. I'm Rafael Sanchez in for Meredith Barrick. I can hear you, Bishop yeah. Chittard. We can hear you. Uh, they always do such a good job there. I've been there. I saw the inflatables that they got there. So Alyssa's yeah. going to show us all that coming Alyssa up. Alyssa was so excited to go out there today. <laughs> She's been looking forward to the start of Friday Football Frenzy for a while now. So we're excited to get to them. But before we do, we need to talk about what we can expect if you're maybe a fan heading out to the games tonight. Yeah, for anybody going to any high school football games this evening or anything outdoors for that matter, you are in great shape. That is the good news for those of you walking out the door right now to start your work day. There's a little bit of rain in far southern portions of central Indiana. So I'm going to take you down there on Storm Team 6 Raider. It's not a lot of rain. This is really kind of the last hurrah of the rain with that front working through. But just to the east of Bedford as you work your way into uh, Jackson County and then over towards the Seymour area in North Vernon, there are a few showers and that is just about it. But these showers are moving from west to east. They will not advance to the north. So if you're not seeing any rain in your neighborhood right now you will not see any rain for the remainder of the day and for those of you who are seeing the rain showers down towards Seymour you will lose those probably within the next hour to hour and a half to the north where the skies are clear more 50s appearing 59 in Peru as well as Crawfordsville where the clouds are a little thicker to the south 70 in Bloomington right now everybody turns mostly sunny by this afternoon with low humidity turns into a fabulous day Lauren with high temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. All right Todd thanks so much let's take a live look right now at traffic over here on the east side of town. This is traveling smoothly here at I-465 and I-70 on the east side. No major issues to report, but this is part of that detour route, so things get a little heavy here as we get closer to the rush hour. But let, right now, let's take a look at our traffic now map. We can tell you that traffic on I-69 starting to pick back up at this hour after some overnight road work, but a heads up to that southeast side closure on 465. You see the red there on our screen. That closure was set to open back up tomorrow on Saturday, but now it's going to last through Monday morning and of course we'll be keeping you updated. So time now, oops, time right now is 6.02 and Indy Metro Police are working with the FBI right now to teach religious leaders what they should do if they're faced with the worst possible situation. And so this weekend they're holding active shooter training seminars for faith leaders and church security teams. It, it's unfortunate really that we have to have a training for places of worship. A place that uh, many of us look at as sacred and as safe. Uh, we know that history has shown that that's not always the case. The only way for us to make sure that our communities, particularly faith communities, are protected from these individuals who seek to wreak havoc in our community and in our nation is to be not just prayerful, but to also be prepared and to be proactive. The trading sessions are happening Sunday from 3 to 6 at the Indianapolis Hebrew Congregation. Organizers say they hope this training will serve as an example for businesses and all community groups when it comes to being prepared for dangerous situations. Extra security expected today at the headquarters of the state's largest public housing agency. This comes after a veteran facing eviction from his home threatened to shoot people at the Indianapolis Housing Agency office located on Meridian Street in downtown Indianapolis. Employees were forced to shelter in place on Thursday. However, police found and detained the suspect. Those offices will reopen this morning to the public. Investigators are asking for help finding the man accused of raping a stranded driver down in Monroe County. The victim says the vehicle stalled on Tap Road near Raley Place early Tuesday morning between 3.30 and 4.15. Another driver stopped seemingly to help but then sexually assaulted the victim. The suspect is just 
described as a man with a thin build, shoulder length blonde or light colored hair that's thinning or balding on top between five foot five and five foot ten. If you have any information on this case, please call the Monroe County Sheriff's Office at 812-349-2861. An elementary school health aide in Western Indiana accused of stealing prescription medicine from a student. Lydia Stevens of Terre Haute is 40 years old and works for South Vermilion Schools. A state police say she has been under investigation since May. And that's what administrators at Van Dyne Elementary School reported that prescription medicine belonging to a student had been stolen. Police say that Stevens was arrested on Thursday and charged with two counts of theft and possession of a controlled substance. Okay, Raphael, do you have a favorite artist or a song that you just put on repeat? Well, as a Hoosier, we have so many people like Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses okay. from Indiana, John Mellencamp from Indiana, of course, the Jackson 5 from <laughs> Indiana. So we have so many choices when we pick yeah. to pick from, right? And students are using their talents to make music while working now in the classroom. Very cool. And our own Aaron Lish is finding out more about this program at the J. Everett Light Career Center. And this is how music production and your kids can get involved in the music industry. Aaron, you look pretty busy there in the recording Sucking studio. a good time. What are you doing? <laughs> so, sorry, guys. I'm just trying to drop my new song that try to like match Taylor Swift. I think I'll get as many hits as she did. She already has 4.5 million in 12 hours. What's the big deal about that? But here, students are learning everything they need to know in this music industry along with their talents. So these are the audio booths they have here. They have two separate rooms here, and it's really neat that they get to build a solid foundation with digital audio, audio recordings, mixing skills, and they use actual industry standard software to make those songs that actually end up on the school's radio station. Students work on music composition, sound editing, engineering, and in this entire process, they get to show their creativity. They actually have a major project Project in creating their own album and doing a live concert at the end of the year. Instructors say they will get college credit along with certifications and editing software like Avid, and that really puts them on the right track to a music career. We emphasize that it takes passion, grit, very hard work and determination along with networking. Those things are just key and I try to preach that all year long uh, for those who are very, very interested. So Hendrick says this is a tough industry, so he reminds those students that you need to, of course, be passionate about this and know that there are opportunities out there for them. Of course, you can be a performer, but they have all these different aspects as well. You can be an engineering technician, a live technician. You can also be a producer. In the next half hour, we're going to actually hear from one of those students who might be wanting to go down that path. But guys, I got to get back to business here. So I'll... I'll see you guys in the next half hour. See you later. Oh yeah, football uh -huh. season is back and that means it is time for Friday Football Frenzy. Oh, and Raphael, we know this is one of Alyssa Donovan's favorite assignments of the whole year. She's been looking forward to this. And so this morning, yeah. she's live at Bishop Chittard High School with the Trojans, the students there as they get pumped up for tonight's home game. First one of the season, Alyssa. Yes, and they are getting excited. They are playing rebuff tonight. I want to show you, I have Tony, Sarah, and Principal Joe, and we're about to do an eating contest. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, one, two, three, go! Yeah. So this might take a while. You can see they've got several donuts to get through, but they are excited. Principal Joe tells me that just a couple years ago, he was beat by a student, and he's trying to win this year. But it's slow going. We've got two seniors, we've got the principal, and these kids are geared up for tonight's game. Rebuff is a great team, but so is Bishop Tatard, and they are excited for this game tonight. They are hoping for a win. Bishop Chittard is ranked number two, and Brebuff is ranked number four. So this is going to be an awesome matchup for the two teams. While they're going, I'm going to talk to a couple students here. Tell me, are you excited about football season? Yes, I'm super excited. Cheer on the boys. <laughs> what are you excited about this year? The student section. <laughs> what are you excited about? Home games. Home games. Home games. First 
one is tonight. We got the cheerleaders here too. They are pumping up the crowd. All right, you guys. All right, Tony's got a good donut going. He's got one left. So does Principal Joe. check back to see who wins this but I'll send it back to you guys in the studio you can see we're having a lot of fun here this morning and of course they're excited for the game tonight for now I'll send it back to you in the studio I'll let you know who wins this eating contest all right and the whole the whole neighborhood there on Kessler is now awake <laughs> there in, in, the, in the Broad Ripple area with all the loud and screaming going on. So Good they, morning, Broad Ripple. <laughs> right, they, hey! They always do a, such a terrific job there, and so you can see they're excited. So we'll kind of work backwards with your forecast today. We'll start with the football frenzy forecast here for this evening. Partly sunny, 7 p.m., 73 degrees as these games start to kick off. 70 as they wrap up. This morning as you walk out the door, there's a little bit of cloud cover out there, some showers down to the south that will all move out it's turning into a beautiful day so it's great for football or anything else mid 70s to the north getting a little closer to 80 degrees here in uh, southern locations today and then in and around the metro area high temperatures should be right around uh, 76 degrees get out there and enjoy more on the rest of the weekend coming up in just a few minutes Todd thank you up next a new allegation in the lawsuit involving the state's attorney general but this claim is aimed at someone else inside the state house at X they hit the books in the morning and then they go to work in the afternoon next in Hiring Hoosiers, the program that's making students part of the workforce before they are out of school. The time now, 611. You are watching Good Morning Indiana. NewEducation.com today. Welcome back. As kids head back to the classroom, Hiring Hoosiers has been highlighting programs moving students from the classroom to career. So students from seven school districts in and around Madison County, they spend their mornings hitting the books, Lauren, and then the afternoons getting that real life experience in the workplace. Our Mark Mullins explains. In Elwood, you'll find the Heinz Career Center. And inside, you'll find Zach Whitaker lighting the spark to jumpstart his career. I want to be a welder when I grow up. Uh, I've been working hard in this class. I have three certifications, and I'm hoping to make that a career and retire from it. You'll also find Bo Bailey in his senior year learning what it takes to become a machinist and excelling at it. I love this. I love coming here to school. It's actually really relaxing. It's not constant paperwork. You just turn on the machine after you know what you're doing for a while and just get to work. Both Bo and Zach are among the more than 395 students benefiting from the Heinz Career Center, which serves seven school districts in Madison, Hamilton, Tipton, and Grant counties, helping students explore their options in a number of high-demand vocational careers. Manufacturing, automotive, health, public service, those types of of career pathways, which the state has set up recently. But the idea of career technical education really was born in Indiana in the late 60s uh, when this facility was built. The emphasis on needing technical skills became more important in the workforce. Students still take their core academic classes at their high schools and spend time here learning from professionals in a number of industries thanks to partnerships with more than 20 companies and government entities. It's been a win-win, funneling students into a pool of hireable skilled trade laborers. The programs here are expanding so fast there's now a demand for more space to accommodate more students. Local businesses are banding together with government and the school to build a larger facility. We have expanded the number of partners that we have by probably threefold in the last five to seven years because of the demand for the laborers in the workforce is so high. And they need not just not unskilled labor, they need skilled labor. And this is where they come to get it. Zach will already be working by the time the new center opens, especially since he's getting certifications while in high school. He feels this place has already helped him find a passion, a purpose, and a potential paycheck. Once you're certified, they're desperate for welders out there, so it's pretty easy to find a welding job after that is what I hear. That's what I hear. 
<laughs> Working for you in Elwood, Mark Mullins, RTV6. Mark, thank you so much. Administrators say the new facility should be up and running within the next five years. If you'd like more information about the programs offered at Heinz or to read up on the admissions process, we have a link to this story at our website, hiringhoosiers.com. Just click on this story. This morning now at 617, there are new allegations stemming from that lawsuit against Indiana's Attorney General. However, these claims are aimed at another state official. That's right, an amendment to the lawsuit that accuses Hill of sexual harassment and retaliation now includes an accusation against a Democratic state lawmaker. The Indianapolis Star was the first to report that the claim is coming from one of the four women who accused the Attorney General of groping them at a bar last year. Samantha Lozano, a legislative aide for House Democrats, told staffers last spring that the lawmaker had made unwanted advances towards her. The lawmaker is not named in the court documents and the filing does not say whether or not House Democratic Caucus took any action. It is not election day just yet, but at Exploration Acres in Tippecanoe County, take a look at this. Wow. Wow is asking for your votes to have this corn maze be included in a USA Today award for 10 best corn mazes. You win. Yeah. Purdue's 150th <laughs> anniversary. It runs through Monday, so please vote. You can find a link to vote in this story on the IndyChannel.com. Exploration Acres, southeast of Lafayette, is Northwest Indiana's largest corn maze and pumpkin patch. The maze is 18 acres with more than nine miles of paths. That is just amazing. <laughs> just for doing that, they should win. This yeah. all opens to the public on September the 13th. And now the time 618. It's a corn maze, so all <laughs> ears are on Todd Clausen's forecast, which I'm told is going to be fantastic. It is this weekend, you know, and some of the mornings here are going to be a little on the cool side. So it's going to kind of give you that fall-like feel, but really it's a great stretch of weather all the way through the weekend. I mentioned the cool nights. Some of you in northern locations could be in the 40s come tomorrow morning, uh, but make those outdoor plans. Even with the cool nights, it turns into very pleasant afternoons for us all across the area. So 50s to the north in Peru as well as Crawfordsville this morning. We're at 60 in Tipton. As you work your way southward, it is a little bit warmer due to a little more in the way of Cloud cover. 70 in Bloomington, 67 is the current temperature right now in uh, the metro area. So the skies are clear to the north. The clouds will continue to push to the south. Some of you seeing a few showers in the Seymour area over towards North Vernon. Those two are moving out and this cold front as it continues to just slowly push to the south will continue to push all the cloud cover and shower activity to the south as well. So the day will get better and better as it goes on. So there goes the showers. They depart to the south and here we go. By 11 a.m., everybody is basically enjoying partly to mostly sunny skies. And then it's just a mix of sun and clouds throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours. And for any outdoor activities tonight, and I know there's a lot of them going on, uh, you are going to be in tip-top shape. However, I will mention you may want to grab the jacket, though. Once the sun sets, which is at 8.30 here this evening, temperatures fall into the 60s pretty quickly. And then by time we get to tomorrow morning, check out some of these low temperatures, potentially maybe into the upper 40s in some northern locations. Uh, Lafayette 51 degrees, 52 in Peru City running a little bit warmer at 57. But it's an opportunity to turn off the air condition, open up the windows, let the fresh air in because uh, there's not going to be much in the way of humidity either. So you don't have to worry about that. And then for the day tomorrow, sky is going to look like this. This is going to be a bright blue sky for us with the low humidity and mostly sunny skies and temperatures that will be running up into the mid 70s here later on this afternoon. One of the great events that we have in the city every year is the Feast of Lanterns over in Spades Park. And I was at the Spades Park Library the other day and the librarian's like, Mr. Clausen, can we finally get some good weather for this event? Last year, it got canceled. Well, you're in great shape Saturday evening if you're heading to this. Temperatures starting in the 70s, falling into the 60s. Mainly clear skies, pleasant temperatures, but it cools off quick. So you may want to have the jacket. And then on Sunday, cool start again in the 50s, but warming a little bit more on Sunday into the upper 70s in potentially into the low 80s by Sunday afternoon for some of you. The humidity comes back as well as the daily chance of storms as we head into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic right now for your Friday morning commute. No problems here in the downtown area. This is a live look at I-70 and I-65 here at the North Split. No crashes to report. Traffic is smooth sailing. They say he's a big boy. They say he's a big boy. Next on our trending <laughs> six, if you're willing to drive a while, this guy, oh yeah, is looking for a good home. <laughs> that story next.
citrate free. Here's to you. Before you head out the door, it is time for the trending six. And Lauren, one of these stories a lot of people are talking about involves a Colts legend and a big announcement for a Hoosier. Boys, I hope you've had an incredible practice at Lucas Oil Stadium, the house that legends built. Nate Snyder, congratulations, my brother. You are officially on full scholarship at Indiana University. What a great moment there for Nate Snyder of IU. The Center Grove native was a walk-on kicker for the Hoosiers a couple of years ago. And now his hard work has paid off with a full scholarship. Congratulations. Good luck to him. And last night, the Raiders and the Packers played an exhibition game in Canada. And they ended up playing on a short field. You see, the stadium in Winnipeg is used for the Canadian Football League. Their field is longer, but their goalposts are placed at the front of the end zones. Where the NFL field was laid out on the turf it, it meant there were divots in that field of play so to avoid players potentially getting hurt officials shortened the field by 10 yards on each side meaning the game was played on an 80 yard field who knew well it's the hostess twinkie or fancy victoria sponge cake get ready it's a delicious day national sponge cake day mm. the easiest way to celebrate would just be to pick up a box of twinkies but you can also find recipes online to make your own full sponge cake by the way the victoria sponge cake was named after England's Queen Victoria. It's two sponge cakes with the filling in the middle, such as jam and cream. They could have used that at the Bishop of Tart eating contest this morning. We'll check so. on them later, right? Yep. Someday, a long time from now, an astronaut tour guide may step out, out onto Mars, point to the small stone and announce, and that, my friends, is Rolling Stones Rock. NASA has taken the name of the band and given it to a rock. It's not just any old rock. NASA's InSight lander touched down on Mars last year. The machine's thrusters disturbed the golf ball sized rock, sending it rolling three feet, hence the name Rolling Stone. There you go. There you go. The Morris Animal Refugee in oh, Philadelphia, wow. Pennsylvania here has a very <laughs> large, very special resident in need of a forever home. BJ, also known as Big Boy Mr. B, <laughs> is larger than your average house cat, I would say so. In fact, he's weighing in at just over 26 wow. pounds. When the shelter first posted about BJ yesterday, he got so much interest, their website crashed. No cat shaving, but that's a dinosaur. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it a big looks like boy. a wild animal. Uh, this is not your typical porch pirate, a Pennsylvania family security oh. camera. <laughs> what in the world caught the thief who stole a box of dog food off their porch? <laughs> I don't think police are going to go after that criminal. The dog food company saw the video and they're sending the family a new order. Right. Holy like, don't mind mole. me, just going to snatch this one. Uh, yeah. Listen, when bears come a-knocking, you let right. them have whatever <laughs> you they want. <laughs> it's A-OK. -okay. Uh, he was cute, though, the little yeah. black bear. Just grabbing. <laughs> yeah, they're cute he, until they're sensed, hungry. He sensed yeah. it wasn't a t-shirt or something like that. You could Something smell that there was some there. food in there, right? <laughs> All right, outside right now. It's a cool morning to the north with temperatures that are in the 50s. A little warmer to the south. Uh, Bloomington 70 because you're hanging out to a little bit of cloud cover. Everybody turns mostly sunny this afternoon. Mid to upper 70s. Low humidity. A great stretch of weather that'll take us all the way through the weekend. All right, it is that time of the year again. Week one of Friday Football Frenzy. And we are live this morning with the fired up Trojans here at Bishop Chittard High School this morning and hey, Alyssa Donovan is live in there somewhere too <laughs> and she has a very special guest coming up. We'll tell you who it is for the break. Stick around. A lot of energy. Okay. get you taken care of. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now at 6.30, Classroom to Career is part of our Hiring Hoosiers project, helping your kids find the best career path for them. Today, our Aaron Lish is looking into a program that's giving students a jump start into the music <laughs> industry. I think we had a little 
sneak peek at our special guest. Yeah, so you, I'm the one that needs a translator, but that was Alyssa Donovan. It is Friday Football yeah. Frenzy. She's having a great time at Bishop Tard. I'm Rafael Sanchez, in for Meredith Barrick. Good morning. Good morning, Raphael. I'm Lauren Casey here, and Todd Clausen is also here bringing us the good news. If you're a football fan heading out to maybe your local school for this evening's games, we have great weather for the football friends. Yeah. Did you hear them? I, I, I heard Alyssa <laughs> say something, and then I heard her say something about a special guest for the forecast. So mm. oh. we're not sure, but I think it might be a familiar face okay. if you've been watching our TV6 for a little while. Uh, we'll get to that in just a few minutes, but let's get you out the door here this morning. A live look at Storm Team 6 radar, and it's dry for most of us here in central Indiana. In fact, 99% of us, but there are a few isolated lingering showers here to the south. I just quickly want to point out North Vernon and Seymour over towards Bedford. If you're in that area, don't be shocked if you see a quick uh, sprinkle here this morning, but they're on their way out. They're pushing off towards the east. They will not move to the north, and you can see the skies in northern locations have already cleared out across the area, and that's why temperatures to the north are running quite a bit cooler. We're in the upper 50s right now from Peru to Tipton, back towards Crawford. 61 in Lafayette, 67 in Indy, but 70 where the clouds are in place still down in Bloomington. So today, just got to be a little bit patient in southern locations. You do not have to be patient at all in northern locations. You get into the sunshine right away once it comes up a little after 7 o'clock. Then everybody enjoys sunshine this afternoon. Temperatures in the mid-70s. This evening, any outdoor events, you will be in great shape, whether that's football, the Jason Aldean concert, or just maybe going out for dinner. Just know it cools off pretty quickly once the sun sets back into the mid 60s. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We're keeping a close eye on your Friday morning drive, and here's a live look on the north side. I-465 at Ditch Road. Traffic in this area pretty heavy this morning. It's picking up in both directions, as you can see. Right now, the good news is the only crash we're monitoring right now is down on the south side of town at Meridian Street and Southport Road. No injuries to report at that spot this morning. Of course, we'll continue to keep a close eye on things and keep you updated. The time now is 6.33. Does your child have dreams of making it big in the music industry like who is your legends like John Mellencamp, the Jackson 5, Bill Gaith, or even Sandy Patty? <laughs> well, as part of our Classroom to Career and Hiring Hoosiers project, we're actually looking at a program that's helping kids start that journey into the music world. And our Erin Lish, who plays piano, is live at <laughs> the J. Edward Light Career Center, where students are actually getting the experience they need to be classroom to career ready. Take it away, Erin. <laughs> Good morning. So maybe your kids are better than me. Maybe they're close to more like Alicia Keys style. Maybe they're really good at the guitar, shredding it like Jimi Hendrix. Or maybe they want to become a DJ like Steve Aoki. Right here in the music production program, students are learning all about the music industry. Felix, the producer, making all new types of music. Students get inspired by their favorite rappers and producers. Every time I listen, like, oh God, I wish I knew him. This creativity is happening in the music and production program at J. Everett Light Career Center. The thing that you can improve is consistent levels throughout. Okay. Instructors let students use Pro Tool software to make mixes, which is a music industry standard. Students who take our class are ahead of the game when they go to the next level, whether they, whether they go to a six-month recording school or to a four-year college. Which draws Derek Franklin to the program. Basically, I think that's a very unique experience. Not everybody is able to experience this. He mixes his beats to air on their in-house radio station, getting him interested in working in the music industry. Possibly become a producer and help people that are practically underground rappers, like try to help them create beats. Their major project is to have a mock record company and create an album. Teachers point out there's stiff competition in this industry. We emphasize that it takes passion, grit, very hard work and determination along with networking. Those things are just key. And through their talent and tenacity, they're hoping to make it big with the help from this opportunity. Got the style that combines all that, yeah. So students are getting all this knowledge in the music industry. They use high tech equipment like you see here. I mean, even this guitar, it's a Fender. So they are going all out for these students. And along with learning about music, they're also saving money about $400 worth of college credit. I'm gonna try to learn how to play this, maybe from those students that you saw in the story there. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Aaron, good luck to you there. Well, if you are looking to learn a little bit more about any of these 
unique career programs that we're featuring on the show or job opportunities in central Indiana for all ages, our Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page is a big help. That's where you can find posts from prospective companies who are looking for new employees and all of our other Hiring Hoosiers stories. Again, it's just a click away for you right now on the Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page. A school safety group formed by parents in the aftermath of the Noblesville School West shooting wants the state to do more to prevent violence in our state. And so far this month, there have been at least five reported cases of students bringing guns to schools across central Indiana, from Muncie to Indianapolis. The group Noblesville Stands Together is calling for security changes in schools, resources to address the emotional health of children, as well as responsible gun ownership. We have gun owners in our group, um, several of them. Um, I have hunted. I uh, enjoy shooting um, sporting clays. The problem is not guns. The problem is the fact that people who should not have guns have too easy access to guns. Every school district in our state is required to have a school safety specialist. And after the Noblesville school shooting, the state legislature passed a bill that increased safety funding by $5 million each year for the next two years. The time now is 6.38 and this morning students and staff at a Greene County school will not attend class after being forced out of their building yesterday afternoon. The closure surrounds a hazardous material incident at Eastern Greene Elementary Middle School complex east of Bloomfield. The Greene County EMA director says that several people were sent to an area hospital for observation but no major injuries were reported. Authorities are still working to determine the cause of the incident but say it is not related to a gas leak. Eastern Green school officials say nobody is being allowed back into the building until air quality can be tested. At 638, the transformation to rapid transit here in Indianapolis, it's almost complete. Indigo gave us our first ride on the Red Line bus system on Thursday. The Red Line will run from Broad Ripple to the University of Indianapolis on the city's south side. Now it all starts officially on September 1st. If you've never considered public transportation, Indigo is encouraging you to give the new system a try. After the free month of September, Red Line fares will cost $175 for one trip and a day Day passed will cost you four dollars. It is your Friday morning wake up call. Football season is back, and that means it is time for Friday football frenzy. That's right, and we are literally kicking off the season with one school that always brings yes. the energy to our show, even at 6 a.m. on a Friday morning. Our own Alyssa Donovan is joining us live this morning at Bishop Chittard <laughs> High School. And hey, she hey. brought along one very special hey. guest. Hey, Alyssa. We know him. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I know. It's so exciting. So we are here with all the students from Bishop Chittard. They are so excited for tonight's forecast. Go for it. Well, thank you, Alyssa. Good morning, everybody. And it's just that. It's a good morning. High pressure's moving in. It's pushing away all of those areas of warmth and humidity. And it's going to be a great night for a ball game between two classy high schools, Brebuff Jesuit Braves and the Trojans of Bishop Chittard High School. You know, that front, this front right in through here, it's slowly sinking to the south and high pressure is moving in. And the high pressure that's having a tendency to settle down and dry out the atmosphere. So we're gonna have a great evening tonight. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 70s at kickoff. And by the time you're going home with a Trojan victory, temperatures will be in the mid to upper 60s. We'll have a northeast wind at about six to 12 miles an hour. All in all, a delightful evening here at Bishop Chittard High School, especially when the Trojans win, are victorious. Yay! Let's hear it for the Trojans. Thank you so much, Swoop. He said it first. Bishop Chatar Trojans are going to win this one. These kids are so excited for tonight's game against Rebuff. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. My, my, my job's easy. What Swoop said.
What swoops in? He was right, right, he was right on the money. I'm good for the that rest of awesome. the day, right? Yeah. Uh, so, good, awesome. so good to good see him. him. He hasn't missed a beat there. All right, outside right now, we're talking about temperatures that are in the 60s and 70s, depending where you are, with partly cloudy skies. So as the kids go off to school, uh, there's a little bit of cloud cover coming home. It's just great. 77 degrees turns into that beautiful evening that Swoop was talking about. And here are your high temperatures for the day today with mostly sunny skies and low humidity, about 76 in Kokomo. A little warmer down to the south, Bloomington over towards Columbus, around 78 degrees. So obviously we had high school football covered, another big event. A lot of people will be at Jason Aldean up at Ruoff uh, here this evening, heading to Noblesville. You may want to bring the light jacket as soon as that sun sets around 830. Temperatures will cool off into the upper 60s. Then by tomorrow morning, you're waking to temperatures that are in the 50s all across the area. We'll talk more about that weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, Todd, thank you so much. Who's ready for some more? high octane action on this Friday. And just after the break, we have your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to the National Hot Rod Association, U.S. Nationals, and Lucas Oil Raceway. The time now, 642. It is Friday, August the 23rd. Come on back. Strength to make a difference. The time now is 645. It is time for Hiring Hoosiers. Our Classroom to Career project is teaming up on our Friday Football Frenzy School this week, Bishop Chatard. And every week, they have guest alumni speakers help give students insights into different careers. Yeah, this is part of their alumni speaker lunch. This week, 1999 Bishop Chatard graduate Mike K Matt rather Cairns was on hand to share information about the career in cybersecurity, a growing field. Cairns is the Senior Director of information security at Eli Lilly. We talked with students who say that it's a great way to learn about a variety of different career paths. I think it's really cool to like learn about someone's legacy that came from the same place as you, like where they were able to go after like graduating and where I could see myself in like relation to what they did. Hearing about it makes me feel so much better because I have a lot of fears that I won't like be employed. So being able to see people from my school who did go on and like are successful and working in the careers that they wanted to study in. I'm like, oh, I can do that. I can, like, it makes me feel so much better. I'm and Bishop Shotard brings in alumni speakers from different careers like journalism, sports management, and video game design. Always giving back. Yes, and right now in the forecast, a lot of people getting fired up for those football games and fired up for our Friday forecast because that's also exciting. It's gonna be spec. Spectacular, Todd Clausen. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a little bit of a rough week. We had the severe weather that went through on Tuesday. Yesterday, we had some rain across the area. We are making up for it here going forward today and into the weekend. Look at this beautiful sunrise uh, that is taking place. Still a little bit of low cloud cover hanging around uh, parts of the area, but you can see plenty of blue sky. And as soon as that sun continues to get higher above the horizon, sunrise officially not until after 7 o'clock this morning, any of this low-level cloud cover will get burned off very, very quickly. Six 67 degrees. Uh, that is the current temperature. You can tell that the front has now made its way through central Indiana because the wind is out of the north northeast. So that northerly component to the wind will help to drop the humidity throughout the day and it'll also keep our temperatures in the 70s later on this afternoon. And where that front is fully through, look at that 59 in Peru as well as Tipton 58 in Crawfordsville. Muncie down to 63 degrees. Still a little bit warmer down to the south. Front not fully through southern Indiana. 70 degrees in Bloomington. You're running a little bit warmer with the cloud cover around as well. And as far as these showers that you see streaming across southern Indiana, they're just going to move from west to east. They will not advance to the north. So places like Bedford and Seymour, I know you've seen some rain, North Vernon. Uh, that'll continue here maybe for the next hour or so. And then as that front moves south, it pushes the clouds and the showers to the south as well. And you will get into a pretty nice morning. Oh, I would say by about mid-morning, you're clearing out, uh, of course, where the sun is out already, you're just going to be nice and sunny from start to finish here throughout the day today. So overall, it's a beautiful day for us. Get out there and enjoy. And we'll continue that nice weather all the way into the weekend. So here's the hour by hour temperature breakdown for you. We're into the low 70s by 11 a.m. Mid to upper 70s as we get into the afternoon. Very, very pleasant. And of course, this evening, lots of events. We highlighted the high school football going on, the Jason Aldean concert. The Indians are in town. Uh, two games here, Friday 
Friday and Saturday, and it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Night. And so Raphael will be over there. Donatello, not this Raphael, the other Raphael. Uh, Leonardo and Michelangelo, like right? <laughs> you, you know, pizza. you can get out there. Uh, it's going to be beautiful. Temperatures in the 70s falling into the 60s. And, of course, Friday night fireworks after the game. Tomorrow morning, temperatures will be anywhere from 51 to 57. So if you're out late tonight or up early tomorrow morning, you'll probably want to have that jacket handy. 51 in the outlying areas. 57 will be the low temperature in the city. And then your temperature tomorrow by the afternoon hours up to 77. Beautiful day with low humidity. Sunday, partly sunny skies and a high temperature of 81 degrees. Late Sunday, the clouds will start to increase. Maybe could be a spot shower very, very late Sunday afternoon into the evening hours. Uh, but I'm not completely sold on that. The better storm chances, and they're just isolated storm chances. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week as temperatures get back into the 80s. Lauren, and the humidity starts to come up. But until then, enjoy the weekend. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We're keeping a close eye on your Friday morning commute. Here's a live look in downtown. I-70 here at the North Split. Traffic's picking up, moving along smoothly. The only crash we're monitoring this morning is on the south side at Southport Road and Meridian Street. So have a safe morning commute. Lauren, thank you so much. A feline putting his nine lives on the line. Just ahead in Good News Friday, the lucky rescue that happened not once, but twice in Knightstown. And it's time to get those engines roaring. Right now is your chance to win a family four-pack of tickets to the NHRA U.S. Nationals at Lucas Oil Raceway. The tickets are good for any day from August 28th through September 2nd. All you need to do is be the sixth caller right now. Here's the phone number you need to call. It's 317-269-1459. Good luck. The time right now is 6.50. Stay with us. Good News Friday is back right after the break. Working for you. Oh, well, Raphael, you came on a great day. Yes. It is the first week of high school football season, and that means it is time for the return of Friday Football Frenzy. And we're kicking it off at Bishop Chattard High School this morning, and that's where <laughs> our Alyssa Donovan is live. You'll be able to see her. You may not hear, be able to hear her because those kids are so excited. It's a great way to kick off a Friday. Hey, Alyssa. Friday here and we're bringing you some positive and uplifting stories to get that weekend started. You guys know how to party on a Friday That's here, right? right? We, we start we start this morning with one lucky cat in Knightstown. It all started when Kevin Ritchie heard a kitten's cries coming from inside of a dumpster. Yeah, so he called the town and they sent out an employee named Levi who was able to open up the dumpster enough to get the scared kitten out. Yeah, but then the cat made a run for it and fell right into a storm drain. And so thankfully Levi was able to open the manhole and rescue the kitten for a second time. After cleaning <laughs> up the scared cat, they named him Lucky Levi after his rescuer. And we want to thank Kevin for sending us that Good News Friday story from Knightstown. And from one very lucky kitten there to the story of one very lucky dog. So a dog at a shelter in Arizona is now set to be quite 
the movie star. Mm -hmm. Take a look. This is Monty, and his two, oh. and he's a two-year-old terrier mix. Yeah, he came to the shelter as a stray, but he was always super friendly and loved to greet people. And then some animal trainers from Hollywood came across Monty and figured he was the perfect fit to star in Disney's live-action remake of Lady and the Tramp. And, How about that? And so why not? So you now can see Monty on the big <laughs> screen playing Tramp very soon. Oh, so cute. Well, they're normally rocking out on stage, but heavy metal band Metallica is also changing lives. They just recently donated nearly $300,000 to the country of Romania to help build its first ever children's hospital. The man made that announcement just recently during a concert in that country. The hospital will help children and Romania return to good health. It's expected to be open by the end of next year. So besides you, our other rock star here on set, of course, is Tom <laughs> Clausen. Jason Aldean will be in Noblesville, so yeah, the, great time for weather and for everyone to come out. You know, and anything going on today outdoors, you are in great shape. This morning, part of cloudy skies, going mostly sunny by this afternoon. Low humidity, temperatures in the 70s. Tomorrow morning, we're in the 50s, but we warm into the mid to upper 70s once again, then up to 81 on Sunday with lots of sunshine. Make those weekend outdoor plans now. It's going to be a real nice one. Thank you, Todd Clausen. We appreciate you. Have a good weekend. All right, and we do want to go back out live to Bishop Chittard and get a look at those students because they woke up early for us here on Good Morning Indiana, as did Swoop McLean, a very popular face here for people who have been watching RTV6 for years now. And we have a RTV6 special, our 70th year anniversary. You can watch why they called him Swoop, why he, how he got that name. Yeah. You go online on the channel.com and learn more about Swoop and our 70 years here in Central Indiana. Have a great weekend. The energy is up. Good luck to that team and all teams tonight on this Friday. Have a good weekend.